Hey guys, this time around we're gonna build a door that's gonna cover some IT equipment for a client. Overall width of the door is gonna be 28 inches and 66 inches tall. Because we're gonna attach this to the wall, we're gonna build a frame, which we'll then attach the door face to. Along with this, we're also gonna build a smaller door that's gonna go over an electrical panel. Our first step is going to be to mill up all our pieces. We couldn't get two and a half inch wide planks, so we're going to take some five and a half inch stock and rip that down. With all our pieces cut to width, now let's start cutting some to length. We're going to start by building this frame. This is what it will hold the door over the data closet. 66 inches, total width is 28. But up here, we have cables that run up. So what we're actually gonna do is a little bridge over it. So let's get to cutting those pieces in assembly. Due to the length of the cut that I gotta make, I had to set up a stop block on my auxiliary table, which is also one of my workbenches. To hold the frames together, we'll use pocket hole screws. I clamp the pieces onto uh, the edge of the table saw and do some of my assembly there. I then take my square to hold everything together. I have two clamps set up, one as a stop so I can push on the piece and the other one holding the pieces flush to each other. To build the bridge, I'm going to use some pocket screws, a short piece just clamped into place to hold everything together. And then I'll pre-drill for some long sheetrock screws that uh, will go from the frame onto the bridge itself from the back. You won't see these. Later in the video, I'll explain where I had to do a redesign on this because it turns out the door wouldn't open properly. So this is what the bridge at the top of the frame looks like. Now we're going to take some measurements and start working on the doors. We've set up our router table to cut a notch in each of the styles and rails for the doors. That's where the floating panels will go in. Now we just mark the sides of the doors that we want facing up and we run all the pieces through. Later we'll come back and cut the tongue for the styles that will fit into the rails. With all the slots cut, we changed our bit in order to cut a tenon on the ends of the rails. I've created this little sled that holds the pieces square to the bit and prevents tear out. Okay, so the rails and styles are all cut. We dry fit it, and now we're gonna measure for the panels. They're gonna be an inch larger than the opening, uh, give or take. I'm cutting those panels about an eighth of an inch narrower than the total width, so that there's some movement. I'm gonna cut all the panels now because I have to cut back and trim the edge uh, so that it fits into that quarter inch slot. These are half inch panels. By doing everything right now, I just set up the saw once for the uh, panel cutting and everything just rolls from there. We're gonna use a stack data height cutter in this table saw and that will thin the pieces on the edges, letting them go into the slots. I set the stack data head cutter to its maximum width. That's much wider than what we need for these panels. So I set up an auxiliary fence that will let us set the depth and also keep the data head cutter from the regular fence. The data head cutter can do some nasty damage to the fence. So let's not do that. A quick test fit to make sure that we got the sizing right. And it looks like it's a go. Here I'm taking apart one of the side panels that I dry fit before gluing up. Uh, always important to do those dry fits because you never want to have to adjust an assembly while the glue is drying. And speaking of glue, uh, we're going to put glue where the rails and styles meet but not where the panel touches the boards because we want that panel to float. And it has to do with the expansion contraction of wood. Uh, once I have all this assembled and the panel in place, what I'll do is take some clamps, uh, hold everything together, 
and then take my pin nailer and from the back put in a couple of pins on each of those intersections. That'll hold the pieces together so that I don't have to have the clamps on overnight. I'll then come back with a little bit of putty, cover up those holes, and after some sanding you'll never see them, especially with uh, several coats of paint that we'll apply later. We have the bottom section done, it's time to move on to the top. When I went ahead and put this in, that board had twisted a little bit, so it took a little bit of finagling. I just had to uh, move it a little bit to one side, get that in, and then I put down a couple of uh, sticks so that when I put the pressure with the clamp, I don't mar the wood. A very important thing to do. Uh, cowls and separators are always important. After letting the pieces dry overnight, all we need to do now is a little bit of sanding. A light sanding is all we need, everything is primed, so this is just to even out some of the surfaces. It's time now to connect the sides to the actual door. We're going to do this with a combination of biscuits and pocket screws. I try to bring the glue in to each of the slots then I use my brush to push it in there and even it out on the edges. That's uh, thunder that you hear out there. Uh, it is summer in Florida. The biscuits help align everything and the pocket screws are really going to hold it as it dries overnight, the glue. Uh, that's also a technique that I learned from uh, several other cabinet makers. Uh, really speeds things up overall. I keep the biscuits in their box sealed as much as possible because they will swell in the moisture. Uh, Again, especially in South Florida, and rumble the thunder it goes. And here we go with the pocket screws. Uh, light touch on this. Uh, we want to get everything even. Uh, we will come back later with the sander and sand all the edges to make sure that the surfaces are flush. After letting the glue dry overnight on the case, it was time to put in the bottom. I'm going to use some pocket screws and just holding it temporarily with my square clamps yeah, it does a really good job of holding everything in the right spot. You'll notice there's a gap at the bottom and that's because we need some airflow inside this case. Uh, there's IT equipment in here after all and we wouldn't want it to overheat. I started testing the door and realized that the bridge I had built just wouldn't work. So I redesigned it to be at a 45 degree angle. And here I'm just pre-drilling for those same screws to hold it all in place. I got a mortise for the hinge that I'm going to use. Uh, so I set my router up to take off just a little bit of the wood on the edge. Uh, I split the difference between the door and the frame and that will let the hinge sit flush once we have everything installed. Here you're watching me put in a piano hinge, which is what I'm using for this piece and the smaller door. To install them though, it, uh, you have to put in a lot of holes. So I went ahead and got a center, uh, a centering bit for my drill. A uh, really cool tool. Uh, you put it up against the uh, screw hole and the bit is centered on it. Uh, so I went ahead and did that for the frame and for the door itself. When I go to install it, I'll put all of the screws in for the door. And then later I'll come through and just do a few on the frame itself. That way, when it comes time to actually put everything up, I don't have it all hinged together. I can quickly take it apart and then do the final install with all the screws. I took everything apart and give it some final sanding 
ended up going down to 220 grit. Uh, I set up for my sprayer and we'll end up doing about five or six coats of the semi-gloss. I have the garage door open uh, with a fan going so I got plenty of, of circulation uh, so no mask required. If we were in an enclosed space or using some different paint I might wear a respirator. Between coats I sand it as well uh, because you can never tell at first if you have an imperfection, a scratch, or maybe an area that you didn't get with the sandpaper the first time. Uh, don't be afraid to do this. Uh, that, that's why we ended up with five or six coats of paint. But you wanted a nice solid covering. I sped up the video because watching someone paint is as much fun as watching paint dry. Before we go ahead and paint the frames, I'm laying out for the mounting screws. Uh, these are going to be countersunk in, and we're going to be using standard wall anchors for drywall. We'll do three on each side on the smaller frame, and four on each side for the larger frame. To latch this door, we're going to use some rare earth magnets. So we're going to drill out four of these guys, it's a half inch hole, on the door, and then we'll epoxy them in place, and then we'll put a small metal bracket on the frame, and that will latch it all in place. To paint the frames, I'm going to just use a brush. Uh, these will really only be seen when the door is open. It also gives me a great opportunity to do touch-up if I need to once the frames are in place. Uh, two coats should do it, sanding in between, just like the sprayer. Several coats of paint and several days for it to dry. And here I'm measuring up for the latches. We're going to put two magnetic latches on the big door, one on the top, one on the bottom. Uh, and usually wait to the very end to put these in. Uh, I simply uh, attach them with a clamp uh, and I measured so that when you open the door it kind of looks even uh, and then I just will pre-drill and put them in the screws. Time to install the hinge and test that the door closes, well in this case the frame. Hey, it works. Now that I have my hinge in place, I can measure for the latches. Here I'm pre-drilling for the plate. I'm just putting in a couple of screws that come with the kit. Now this is the larger door. With the uh, smaller door, I use those rare earth magnets. And for that one, uh, I mixed, mixed up some two-part epoxy and went ahead and put that in the holes and then slid the magnets in place. Uh, we'll let those uh, dry overnight and then we'll put in just a simple screw on the frame to hold everything together. Well, it's time to install the door. Uh, this is uh, the data closet or the board where all the data equipment is held. I'm using a damp rag to catch all the dust uh, and then putting in the wall anchors. Uh, had to do this with the uh, screwdriver because every time I try to use the drill I would snap them. Uh, they were quite brittle. Uh, you can see that the uh, smaller door is already in place and that uh, overall it took about half an hour to install everything. Not too long. Once I had the uh, frame in place uh, I, I'm going to check to see that it's plumb and I'll go ahead and put in all the screws around. I did the left side first and then I confirmed before putting in the screws on the right side that everything was plumb and ready to go. I have a video that I'll publish soon of uh, building a little dead man. It's a little adjustable stand that we actually put the door on to hold it in place. And uh, my assistant here, my son Alex, uh, he was extremely helpful and patient with me as we tried to maneuver this door in a tight space. Uh, holding the door in while you put in all those screws can be extremely frustrating. Uh, I got the first one in, put it in with a hand uh, screwdriver, and then finished up with uh, multiple uh, screws and a screw gun. 
then it was a test fit, uh, and it worked out rather well. It didn't quite latch right at the first instance, so I had to adjust a couple of the magnetic latches uh, and get a lot of cables out of the way. But here it is, uh, two doors installed. And it was really a great project. I uh, hope the customer enjoys it. Uh, the comment was a lot better than all the cables hanging out. Well, that's it. That's the latest project from Rick's Woodworking. I hope you enjoyed it and this video.